Hello everyone, welcome to Gentle Movement, Yin and Restorative Yoga. My name is Michelle Chua. Grab two yoga blocks, a strap, a pillow, and a blanket at least, if you have other props around that you might be able to support your body in, bring that over too, like a chair or something else that you'd like to sit on. And let's begin in a comfortable seat. <sighs> so I like to read something that goes along with a the theme that we've been exploring about our thoughts and state of mind in the past few classes. And this is written by Kristen Neff, who is the founder of the Center for Mindful Self-Compassion. She says, much of our suffering comes from our sense of self becoming entangled in the thoughts, emotions, and sensations that arise in our awareness. We often believe our thoughts and feelings as true without question, and we get lost in a negative storyline about ourselves or our lives. In fact, all our thoughts and feelings are temporary. They arise and pass away. They don't define who we are. Our true, true nature isn't to be found in what's happening, but in the compassionate presence that relates to what's happening. In other words, we are not the contents of our awareness. We are awareness itself. When we forget this, we tend to lose perspective. We get sucked into the drama of what's happening and can't give ourselves the kindness and support we may need. We also instinctively resist what's arising when it's unpleasant. And what we resist persists and grows stronger. When we, may, when we remain aware and don't get so lost in our experience, we suffer less. And this is another link to the kleshas. We talked about that recently and <clears throat> we went even deeper about a year and a half ago. Kleshas are what yoga philosophy calls the root causes of suffering. And one of those main root causes of suffering is misidentifying ourselves as the voice of the ego, as our thoughts, as our perceptions, rather than that who is perceiving the awareness itself. So bring that to mind as we begin our practice of being more present to our bodies, our breaths, and then later sitting in meditation, more so our minds. Let's begin rooting down through the left and right sitting bones. You might even move the flesh aside a bit to really feel the bones underneath press into the surface that you're sitting on. Place your hands at the bottom of your rib cage and lift your rib cage, especially your lowest back ribs. Then roll the shoulders back and down a few times. Keep lifting the back ribs, keep pressing down the sitting bones, and then let the shoulders relax. Broadening the collarbones, let your chin softly glide towards the back of your neck as you lift up through the back of your skull. Maybe close your eyes and set your hands to rest. Palms face down on your lap for a feeling of groundedness. Palms face up if you're looking for uplifting energy. Maybe bring the thumb and the first fingers to touch. And as you rest in stillness here, scan your awareness first into your physical body. Feeling whatever sensations are most prominently inviting your intention, your attention. And as we talked about in mindfulness, bring a quality of non-judgment as you're paying attention to what's here. Now, let the breath be just as it's been, no need to change it. Simply put the spotlight of your awareness onto the breath now. Noting where you feel the breath the most in your body. Notice its pace, its depth, 
and any other qualities about the breath to notice. So we've moved from the physical body to the energetic body. Sense now your mind state. Feel into the energy of the kinds of thoughts that are passing through and to what your awareness is drawn. Notice in turn your emotional state. Feeling into your heart space, noticing if there's anything to be acknowledged or nurtured there. And now let the next inhale come in a little slower through the nose, gently filling up your body. Opening the lips, exhale, long whisper out. Find empty and pause, then allow for an even slower in-breath through the nose. Find fullness and pause. Empty it out through the mouth. And then again at the bottom, hold the breath a moment. Keep relaxing your body. And then invite maybe an even longer inhalation without force, without strain. Hold it in at the top again a few seconds. And when you feel ready, empty it as slowly as you received it. Now you might bring your palms together at your heart, a gesture of gratitude a gesture of union, a gesture of reverence. Let's begin with gratitude, with something that you feel grateful for right now. And now with that powerful energy of gratitude, clarify what you are opening yourself up to experience in this practice centering on your intention or personal prayer. Not being too entangled in the ego, setting it aside by thinking of someone else that you might offer the benefits of this practice to. Find someone or something to dedicate this practice to today. Now let's seal these intentions and dedications and create resonance together as we hold space in shared practice. Using our voices to chant three ohms, inhale deeply. wisdom as you move through this physical practice adjusting your body as you need pacing yourself as you need let's rest the left hand on the chest the right hand on the lower belly and begin to breathe into both palms empty this breath closing the lips so just breathing through the nose hold the breath out 
Let's start to balance the breath together. Inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale five, four, three, two, one. Exhale five, four, three, two, one. Keep counting a few more times on your own. Now add a soft whisper to the breath by gently narrowing or constricting the back of your throat. Make sure that the breath is not forced. There's a smooth, gentle quality to it. So cultivating an inner state of mind-body balance by balancing your in and out breath slowly. Continue this practice of ujjayi pranayama or victorious breathing as we enter our physical practice. So softly open your eyes and find your strap as well as place your knees on the floor so that you can sit in some version of hero's pose virasana where your toes are pointed back knees are in front of you no wider than your hips distance apart if you find it uncomfortable to sit directly on your heels grab a block a pillow a blanket or even two blocks stacked and place that right between your ankles like a stool. Now take hold of your strap between your hands and separate your hands wider than shoulders distance apart where you have a taut grip on the strap. It's not hanging loose like this. And then let your strap rest on your lap as you send the shoulders down and sit up tall, lifting your rib cage again. Let the bottom of your front ribs soften towards the back of your body. As you breathe in slowly, raise your arms overhead, keeping the shoulders down. If they start to rise up, that's a good sign to separate the hands wider on the strap. Exhale, bring the arms all the way behind you and down. Keep the taut hold on the strap. Inhale, raise your arms up. Keep the fronts of your ribs softened in. Exhale your arms forward and down. Now, if it's feeling really easy, you might bring the hands a little bit closer together. So you want some amount of challenge where you're still able to keep your arms straight, keep going to your breath, and your shoulders can stay down even when you lift your arms. Pay attention to the front of your ribs, keeping them softened inward towards your back. So when you lift the arms, there's not a tendency to protrude the rib cage forward. So keep going. I'm going to turn on some music. Go another five to 10 cycles of breath, warming up the shoulders. keeping your breath an even sustained pace. And maybe by now you walk the hands a little closer together if that's available without strain. Keep your focus on the sound rhythm that you're creating in your breath. So that whatever you're doing, moving your body or sitting still in formal meditation, you're opening up to a meditative state of mind. Finish this breath and put the strap aside. Keep sitting up tall here and raise your arms forward, interlace your fingers and flip your palms inside out. Press the heels of your palms up towards the ceiling as you slide your shoulders downward, hug the bottom of your front ribs again inward towards your back. Press your pelvis into the surface below 
and allow a deep breath as if you could breathe up your spine from the base to the crown. Keep your pelvis still, and as you exhale, begin to twist to your right by just turning your rib cage. Pause here as you breathe in. Press up through the heels of your palms, lifting through your crown. Press down through the pelvis. Exhale, keep twisting to the right. We have another three breaths at least here. Now notice your chin. Can you glide it gently towards the back of your throat and parallel your chin to the floor? As you lift up through the back of your skull, slide your shoulder blades down your back ribs. One more breath. So we had a request for a physical practice that promotes digestion and twists definitely do, among other things. So we're just warming up for that. Now come back to center, release the arms and shake them out. A few deep breaths. Hmm. Then raise your arms forward again, interlace the opposite thumb and index finger on top, the non-default ones, and press the heels of your palms up towards the ceiling, stretching the sides of your rib cage. Soften the bottom of your front ribs towards your back. Relax the tops of your shoulders down. And pressing the pelvis down, lift up to your crown, breathe in. Keep the pelvis still, and as you exhale, start to slowly twist to your left side. Press down to the pelvis, inhale up through the center of your spine, rising taller. Exhale, continue to twist. So you'll know that you're not twisting your pelvis, which is what we don't want to do here, by looking at your knees and seeing that your left knee is, or excuse me, your right knee is not coming forward of the left. Both knees are evenly aligned, facing forward. About three more breaths here. Now, Feel into your chin again. Glide it towards the back of your throat. Parallel your chin to the floor and lift up through the back of your skull. Keep softening the shoulder blades down your back. One more deep breath. And then release the arms as you come back to center. Shake them out again. And let's take our bodies down into tabletop pose, hands and knees. So placing your wrists on the ground right under your shoulders, place your knees a couple inches behind your hips. Take a look at your hands and spread your fingers flat where the index fingers are pointing straight ahead, not towards each other, or they're slightly turned out. Now moving the spine in flexion and extension. As you inhale, slowly glide your chest forward, roll your shoulders back and down and look up. This is cow pose. As you exhale, press down through your palms, contract your belly, tucking your tailbone down as you drop your head to round cat pose. Again, nice and slow, breathe in, chest forward, coil it up. Stretching the abdomen here. Breathe out, contract the belly. Drop the head to round, stretching into the back. So give it another five more or less cycles of Bidalasana. Cat cow pose. Going nice and slow to the pace that you can hear your breath. We're going to keep moving just a bit more before we hold still in some postures. So from here, lean back onto your shins and slide your legs in front of you. And we'll do a simple warm up for the hips and lower back. So come on down to your back, lying down, bend your knees towards your chest and take hold of your bent knees. Drop your shoulders into the floor, head on the ground or on a small pillow or folded blanket. As you breathe in, circle your knees apart, separating your thighs. 
As you breathe out, circle your knees together. And just like that, keep going, drawing circles in the air with your knees bent and slowly moving to your breath. So we're gonna be here for quite a bit. So switch directions several times. You might even make this a more organic movement of just rotating each thigh bone in the hip socket. So you're just trying to warm up and lubricate your hip joints. You might also feel at the same time you're massaging your glutes and lower back into the ground. See how much you can comfortably splay your thighs apart. Feel into the range of motion of each leg at the hip. About five more deep breaths here. Keep switching directions. Nice. And then from here, hug your thighs and towards your chest and rock side to side a few times. Gentle compression of the abdomen by hugging the thighs close is another helpful way to start to massage into digestive, the digestive organs. Give them a little compression. You might even rock forward and back, massaging up and down your spine if that feels comfortable. So movement and shaking things up a bit as we're doing now can also be helpful. Getting the energy flowing throughout your body. So however way you rock or turn, start to make your way up and we'll place the two blocks in front of your mat on their tallest height, shoulders distance apart. Step behind the blocks about a foot and separate your feet at least hips width apart, parallel to each other. Bend your knees generously so your belly can make contact with your thighs and shift your weight as far forward as you can balance here. Then hold on to opposite elbows. Let your head hang loose, maybe shake it out gently. Nod the head a few times and you might even help to decompress the spine by softly swaying side to side. Breathe in. Exhale through the nose. Listen to your breath again. Now switch the cross of your arms and as your head hangs heavily towards the ground, float your shoulder bones up away from your head. Offer space in your neck. Couple more breaths. Keep leaning your weight forward, bending your knees loosely. Now with your knees at least a little bent, press your fingertips onto the blocks in front of you. Now if your blocks are too low, you could put a chair in front of you instead if it's higher, or if you have the ability to st stack several blocks, just make sure they're the same height under each hand. Press your fingertips into your props. And as you breathe in, stretch your chest through your upper arms, creating a flat back that is parallel to the floor. Pause and breathe here. So knees are bent from in your belly. Slide your shoulders further and further back as you reach the top of your head further forward and lengthen along the sides of your torso. Take another deep breath. Exhale, bow towards your legs. Inhale, circle your arms apart, rise up to stand. Watch your palms meet overhead in Urdhva Hastasana. Interlace your fingers there, accept the index, and press your left foot into the earth as you side bend to the right, breathing out. Hugging the belly in, inhale, rise up to center. 
Exhale, side bend to the left and press your right foot deeper into the ground. Inhale, rise up to center. Open your arms wide and exhale, bow over your legs. Feel free to bend the knees. Press your fingertips into the blocks again. Inhale, stretch your spine forward, activating your belly. Exhale, bow over your legs. Press through your feet. Inhale, circle your arms and rise up. Again, interlace your fingers, accept the index. This time to your left, exhale, side bend first. Inhale, rise up to center. And to your right, exhale, side bend. So to help us to twist, we want to open up the side body as we're doing now and get some length in the spine. Inhale, center. Exhale, open the arms and bow over your legs. Press into the blocks. Inhale, stretch your spine forward, firming in the belly. Exhale, fold over your legs. From down to your feet, inhale, circle your arms, rise up. Interlace the fingers, accept the index to the right side. Exhale, side bend again. Firming in the belly, inhale, rise up to center. To the left side, exhale, side bend. Inhale, up to center. Open your arms wide, exhale, forward fold. Press into the blocks, inhale, lengthen forward, firming in the belly. Exhale, fold down. Press to your feet, inhale, circle your arms, rise up, one more round of this. Interlace the fingers, accept the index. To the left, exhale, side bend. Inhale, rise up. To the right, exhale, side bend. Loosening up the spine and torso, stretching the muscles that will help you twist. Inhale, center. Exhale, forward fold. Press into the blocks. Inhale, stretch the spine forward, firm the belly in. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, circle your arms, rise all the way up. This time, let your palms meet in prayer. Exhale, trace your thumbs from your crown down to your heart center. Pause here, maybe close your eyes and picture your abdomen. Allow a slow inhale to fill up your belly. Close the lips, and as you exhale, let your belly soften towards your spine. Nice and slow, two more belly breaths here. That's another helpful way to not only relax the nervous system, which in turn helps promote digestion, but also get some movement into the belly, the digestive area. Help to ignite Agni, your digestive fire. And then release your hands. And let's turn and face the wide width of your mat. Step your feet apart, comfortably wider than hips width, and turn out your thighs from the hips, making sure that your knees and your middle toes are turned out the same degree. Bend your knees, come into a wide-legged squat, and just rock a little side to side. You might press your hands into your inner thighs, making sure that your knees are not buckling in. Roll the sitting bones downward, lift the frontal hip bones. And now we're gonna enter another flow, a little more warm up. So from here, press your feet down, inhale, straighten your legs and raise your arms overhead. Exhale, bend your knees into a wide squat and press your palms slowly down in front of you. Inhale, straighten your legs. This time, scoop your arms forward like you're inviting something into your heart. Exhale, bring the palms to the heart and bend the knees again. Feel the energy of these gestures. Inhale, rise up, open sky above, arms in the air. Exhale, squatting, press the palms down, grounding earth below. Inhale, rise, arms in invitation. What are you welcoming in through your intention in this practice? Exhale, hands to the heart center, back to a squat. Couple more rounds, inhale, open sky above, open to possibilities that are endless. Exhale, squatting, grounding earth below. 
Inhale, rise, inviting in. What's your intention? Call that to mind. Visualize it. Exhale to your heart center. Bend the knees again. One more. Inhale, open the sky above. Symbol of infinite possibilities. Exhale, grounding earth below. Inhale, what are you welcoming in? Invite it in. Exhale, hands to the heart as you bend the knees wide. Now land your hands onto your inner thighs, encouraging your knees to stay in line with the middle toes. As you remain in the squat, breathe in and lift the spine, but sink the hips a little lower. As you breathe out, turn your chest to the right and keep pressing the inner thighs open, maybe gently looking over your right shoulder behind you towards the sky. A few breaths here, inhale, keep sliding the shoulders down your back. Exhale, thighs stay open as you're twisting. Couple more breaths. At the end of this exhale, come back to center and straighten your legs, but keep your feet where they are. Inhale, bend the knees, press the inner thighs wide, lift the spine tall. Exhale, twist to your left side and stay for a few breaths, pressing the inner thighs apart, making sure the knees don't buckle in, relaxing the shoulders down, and turning the rib cage, maybe looking behind you and up. Two more slow, deep breaths. come back to center and straighten your legs and let's make our way into downward facing dog downward facing dog for a few deep breaths allow a moment to shift around move your body in a way that helps to loosen up even more like pedaling your feet in place maybe adding to that a little twist where you swivel the hips left and right Maybe also softly shaking your head no a few times, nodding your head a few times, really loosening up your neck, lengthening your spine. Press your palms firmly down and forward and lift your shoulders up and back, just like the hips, up and back. A few more deep breaths here. So going upside down can also be helpful as we get the blood flow moving in reverse, we're stimulating circulation, which in turn also helps to stimulate digestion, turning things upside down. And then come down to your knees. Slide your legs out in front of you. And we'll enter our first held seated twist. Now, as your legs are in front of you and you're sitting upright, notice if it might be helpful to prop your pelvis up on something a little higher, like a folded blanket. If it feels like there's a tendency to round even just a little bit, that can give you just the space in your hip flexors if they're tight to lift the spine. Now keep your left leg straight and bend your right knee, stepping your right foot on the floor in front of your right hip. Notice how tall you can sit here. Maybe you cross the right foot outside of your left knee, making sure that foot is flat on the ground, you're sitting tall, there's no strain in the shoulders. And if you're feeling pretty comfortable there, you might also bend your left knee. Place your right hand behind your pelvis on the floor and raise your left arm as you press into the surface below. Imagine again, breathing up from the base of your spine. Relax the shoulders down, and now to your right, exhale, twist, and lower your left arm to hold your right shin. Or eventually, hook your left elbow outside of your right thigh. Each inhalation, press down through all parts of your body touching the surface below, and lift up. Each exhalation, let the belly soften towards your back, Continue to rotate your rib cage. Find a balance where you're not overexerting yourself in this twist. 
door? Are you feeling like you're just kind of sitting here, <laughs> letting things move on their own? So you're setting up the conditions here, right? You're giving a little stimulation into the abdominal region or some stimulation, maybe not a little, and you're breathing into the areas that might feel a bit stuck because the breath is a vehicle for energy, life force energy, and help things get moving. Now from here, let's count 10 more slow, deep breaths. Like we did earlier in the twist, notice the alignment of your chin. Parallel your chin to the floor and glide it gently towards the back of your throat. Lift up through the back of your skull and relax the tops of your shoulders slightly behind the ears and down. So rather than rounding the shoulders here, there's a lift in the sternum. We're about halfway through those 10 breaths. When you finish the 10th breath out, then gently unwind your spine. Extend both legs forward. Just pause for a moment here. Let your spine unwind from the twist and feel any feedback your body is giving you. Remember that yoga Part of the yoga practice is paying attention it's that practice of mindfulness without judgment the pausing and noticing is just as important as the doing so now let's bend the left knee step the left foot either on the ground in front of the hip notice how that feels or cross the foot outside of your right knee if you're comfortably able to sit tall here and ground both hips, you might also bend the right knee. Place the sole of your left foot flat on the floor here. Backstroke your left arm, land the hand just behind your pelvis. Raise your right arm and press into the surface below as you inhale up your spine. Exhale, twist to your left. Lower your right arm to hold your left shin or eventually hook the right elbow outside of the left thigh. Remember, without judgment, neither version is better or worse, more correct or less correct. It's about you listening to your body right now. How is it giving you feedback to where it just needs to be in this moment? As you inhale, Continue to root down and lengthen up your spine. As you exhale, allow your belly to soften towards your back as you continue to turn your rib cage. So finding that balance of effort and ease here. Feel the alignment of your chin, your neck, chin towards the back of the throat, lift through the back of your skull, Melt the tops of your shoulders slightly back and down. Now let's begin counting 10 slow breaths.
when you finish your 10th exhalation, unwind your spine and stretch your legs again out in front of you in Dandasana. Allow a few breaths here to just observe your body's response to the asana. And find your blanket, please. And we're going to fold it in about one and a half to two inches thick. Place it along the middle of your mat. You don't want it to be too wide, so it's more like a rectangle. Skinny. like that. We're going to rest the area of the lower abdomen right on top of that blanket as we lie down on our bellies in Sphinx pose, giving a little bit of pressure, compression into the lower belly area. So just above the pubic bone, underneath the belly button, resting on that blanket, and then place your elbows on the floor directly under your shoulders in Sphinx Pose. Scoot your knees close together where they're comfortably close together, and then let your toes release back. Feel every toenail land on the floor, even the pinky toenails. And with your forearms on the ground, palms face down, Roll the fronts of your shoulder bones back, sending the shoulder blades down the back. Picture the area between the bottom of your shoulder blades. And can you slightly bring the bottom inner edges of your shoulder blades towards each other? So there's a little retraction. And then right there, press forward. The back of your heart, press it forward, allowing your collarbones to broaden. Now gazing on the ground just ahead of your thumbs, lengthen the back of your neck. Feel the natural space at your throat. And let's come back into belly breathing here. 10 breaths. So breathe especially into where your belly makes contact with a blanket. Inhale. And as you exhale, just feel your weight sink into the blanket. Just like that, nine more slow abdominal breaths. So back bends like Sphinx pose right now, open up the front body. They open up the front of your torso. At the same time, we're putting some pressure into the lower belly, just gently stirring things up there. Picture where you're directing your breath. Maybe close your eyes. And when you're ready, place your hands back alongside your floating ribs and slide into child's pose using that blanket to rest your forehead on, if you like. Child's pose, you might roll the triceps towards the ground and flip the palms to face up, giving your shoulders some space, as well as lengthening your neck. Let your hips become heavier and heavier as you sink them back towards your feet. And 
allow another 10 slow breaths here in Balasana. Feel the compression alongside the sides of your belly. You might breathe into those points of contact between your thighs and sides of your abdomen. And when you're ready to, finishing those 10 breaths, crawl your hands back alongside your knees, pressing the ground as you inhale to slowly lift your torso up. Then please slide your legs out in front of you, grab your two blocks and your pillow and your blanket. Standing your legs forward, find a narrow V shape out of your legs. So maybe the feet are a little wider apart than hips distance. Notice if it might be helpful again to sit up on a folded blanket here so that you can release the hip flexors if they're feeling tight and allow more length in the spine. And set up your blocks between your calves. You're gonna make a tower out of the blocks as high or as low as you anticipate folding forward to rest your forehead on. Now take your pillow or folded blanket and drape it over your thighs. And as you press down through your pelvis, press down into the pillow with your hands, lift your spine, especially lift the belly, and then start to drape the belly onto the pillow as you begin to bow forward. And you might adjust the height of the blocks here so that you don't Strain your neck. You can rest your forehead onto the blocks, the third eye center region, the brow center, Ajna chakra. The shoulders soft and back and down. There might be a little rounding in the shoulders. Just make sure it's not too much that causes tension or strain. And then right here, you might close your eyes. Be here for about two more minutes. About five more slow breaths here. Mm -hmm. 
When you finish those five breaths, take your time to slowly rise up. Moving gently and gradually. And from here, set our bodies up to rest for a few minutes of Shavasana. You might want to elevate your calves on your pillow, just like this, or place the pillow right under the backs of your knees. Give the lower back some support. You might use a folded blanket under your head. If you tend to round the shoulders when you're lying down, you don't want to relax to the floor, it may help to elevate your head on something not too high where your throat can stay open. You might use a weighted blanket over your pelvis, belly, and thighs, offering some warmth into the abdomen, also helpful for digestion, and some grounding pressure some grounding weight. You're seeking a supported way to lift the chest. You can set up your blocks so that one lands on the medium height just beneath the bottom tips of your shoulder blades below, and the other lands on the medium or tall height just beneath your skull. As you're situating yourself, Make lo loving adjustments so that you can feel a sense of symmetry and ease in both shoulders, both arms, palms might be face up, in both hips, both legs, feet are relaxed. Closing your eyes, I'll guide you into a breath technique that's very simple to help activate the parasympathetic nervous system. The relaxation response that's also known as the rest and digest function. And that is, we'll breathe slowly in through the nose and gently expand the belly for a count of five. And we'll breathe out slowly, softening the belly for a count of seven out through the mouth or out through the nose, you decide. Whatever feels more relaxing for you. So close your eyes, relax the muscles in the face, soften your tongue, your ears, your jaw. Let the bones in your body sink into the support below. Soften your hands, soften the base of your spine region, the pelvic floor, soften your feet. And let's begin inhaling into the belly, five, four, three, two, one. Exhaling, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one. Inhale, five. Exhale, seven. Inhale, five. Exhale, seven. Count one more round on your own before you let go of controlling your breath. And when you let go of controlling your breath, allow your whole body and being to experience that feeling of surrendering effort of letting go of doing and allowing stillness. Shavasana.
and stillness. Sense what you feel in your physical body right now. What you notice in the breath and its qualities. And what you notice about your mind and emotional state. Keep listening, keep observing, again with non-judgment. Allow your body to start to move gently, gradually, in your own way. Maybe drawing the knees towards your chest. Taking your time, slowly rise into a comfortable seat. Maybe propping your pelvis on a prop. Sit in a way in which you can be attentive to the present moment with eyes closed or softly open with a steady gaze. Place your hands in a way that allows you to feel receptive to this experience, not resisting what arises, but being curious and kind to yourself. So Kristen Neff says that one way to disentangle our sense of self from the contents of our experience is through noting practice. We simply note what we are thinking, feeling, or sensing, so we maintain some perspective. When we do this, we can more easily see the temporary, ever-changing nature of things. We can allow them to come and go without locking them into place. When our sense of self isn't engulfed by what we're experiencing, we can relate to it more compassionately. So in our five minutes of meditation, I invite you to as concisely as possible, note mentally what is coming up in your experience. For example, itchy. Maybe there's an itchy part of the body that starts to happen. Or sound. Maybe there's a sound that enters. Or there's a feeling that happens. Fear. So as succinctly as you can label whatever it is that's coming up, a thought, a feeling, a sensation, or other thing. Let's begin.
comes back to your physical body. Perhaps place your palms together at the center of your chest. Closing this practice, call to mind something that you are grateful for now in this moment. And then remember your intention again. Visualize it one more time. Remember to whom or what you dedicated this practice to. And in what ways might you continue to observe your thoughts and feelings as just that, thoughts and feelings that come and go. Noticing when you might begin to entangle yourself as the thoughts. Bring this practice to mind. Let's close with one ohm. Allow a deep breath in. Namaste.